Hi everybody, welcome back to your daily dose at home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today I am down in the Eurasia section and at the Japanese Saro and Musk Deer Habitats. Earlier on your daily dose, you watched our zookeeper Alex do some shifting and some habitat rotation, flipping which uh, animal was in which of these two Eurasia habitats. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit more about each of these species, as well as a little bit more about training, shifting and recall, and the importance of that here at the Calgary Zoo. First off, I'm here with our Japanese Sero, which are a member of the Bovidae, or the goat, sheep, and cattle family. They have an amazing conservation story. It's one of my favorites. Back in the early part of the last century, they were almost gone off of our planet. They only live in Japan. And in 1955, Japan actually declared them a national historical monument for an animal. Isn't that cool? In the years since that they've been a protected species, they have gone all the way from endangered to least concern on the IUCN red list, which is a scale of how endangered an animal is. So they are one of the world's most amazing conservation success stories. And Yuki and Flash are amazing ambassadors for their species here at the Calgary Zoo. The other two animals you met today are Ozzy and Sharon, who are our musk deer. And unlike the deer that live here in Canada, the cervidae, uh, like mule deer, white-tailed deer, they don't have antlers. Instead, they are kind of like vampire deer. They have long fangs. They don't drink blood or anything like that. They are a herbivore, but they have amazing long tusks. Now these two animals live next door to each other, but sometimes they do something called a habitat rotation, which is what you've seen today. We rotate several of the different habitats here at the Calgary Zoo with different species depending on the time of year. One of the most popular examples are the King Penguins and Humboldt Penguins, which flip habitats based on the season. But we also have other mixed species habitats, like our lemur habitat or the savanna yard, that have lots of different species living in them. But sometimes you need to move one species, and not all of them. So that's where some amazing training comes into play. If you've checked out our daily dose on tiger training, you saw Kayla, one of our zookeepers, doing some amazing behavioral positive reinforcement training, like big mouth and showing a, a paw for veterinary care. Shifting and recall is a little bit different, but it's one of the most important parts of training that our animal care team can do. To put it really bluntly, shifting is when you ask an animal to move from one space into another. It's a free choice thing, but we do shifting for all kinds of reasons. If we need to go into a protected contact habitat, we don't go in with that animal. So we'll ask them to shift into a bedroom. If we're doing a habitat flock, we might need to move one animal into a space. So how do you teach that? Well, to do that, you need a reward. So if you've ever been at home and you've heard this jingle jangle of a bell down the street, it tells you something. It tells you that if you go outside your house right now, there might be ice cream waiting for you. And that's the sound of an ice cream truck. It's kind of the same principle. When we play a sound, like a recall sound, like a bell or a triangle, that animal knows that if they go through a shifting door, there will be a reward on the other side. If you do that enough times, then every time you hear the door open or you hear that sound, you'll go through just to see if there's a reward. So we can teach that using that positive reinforcement by giving a food reward to an animal who has made the choice to shift. And over time, we add in those recall sounds. But what do you do when you are working in a mixed species habitat like the Savannah building, but you only want to call the hippos in? You don't want the meerkats running into their building or the Red River hogs. You're trying to make sure you only call one animal at a time. So in a building like Savannah, every species has its own recall sound. The hippos is a triangle. There are bicycle bells or a rattle a shaker for the porcupines. And every different species has learned their own. What I think is even cool is even each species of lemur that we have here at the zoo has their own recall. So our keepers can call just the ringtails into the building if they want to. But recall and shifting are also really important part of building a relationship between our animal care team and, and the animals in our care. Because if we ever need them to shift at an unusual time or in an emergency, 
building that bond of trust over time that when I ask you to shift and you do, it's gonna be a worthwhile, it's gonna be a positive experience, means that that has to happen at a weird time of day, like nighttime, if there was an emergency or something, that bond of trust is already built. So shifting and recall are one of the most fundamentally important parts of the training that our animal care team does here at the Calgary Zoo. Now you can go ahead and click on the PDF for your daily dose at home activity. Thank you so much for joining me on this daily dose at home and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.